Another place I love to look at is the SNMP and log place. So we saw that if you click view all, it brings you to management, SNMP, trap logs. So those are all the traps that the controller would send to any SNMP management station, again, like Cisco Prime Infrastructure. You may see a lot of things here that may not be relevant to your problem, but it's always interesting, if you can, to browse through and go down. However, keep in mind that the controller is going to only keep the last 256 entries. So if whatever you're looking for happened more than 256 entries, it's gone, it's been deleted. So you may have some time to clear the logs and retry if you can, but even if you don't, go down the page, maybe you'll see some interesting things. For example, here, I have failure for the username try, and that guy tried many, many, many times. So that may be interesting to check why. If try is a legitimate user, I might wonder why it failed so many times. So you may know that the issue is the authentication. And if you go down here, you may see some information that may not be relevant, but suddenly, look at that. The Redis authentication server is unavailable. So what happened is I lost connectivity to my Redis. No doubt that my user could not connect anymore. So now I know what the problem is. So of course, I don't know why the Redis went offline, but at least I can go to the security people, or I can go on the Redis server, or I can check routing to that box. I know that this is not a user mistyping a password. It's Redis not responding. So this is very useful because you'll get that information in that page. And we saw a warning not long before where it said, well, suddenly Redius is stopping to respond to my request. There is something going wrong here. And then it became available. There are, of course, a lot more that you can get from this page. For example, I got a controller that was rebooting, and it says that suddenly the control path to that mobility member came up. So Mobility Anchor was restored to that controller, etc. So you see, you can have a lot of information about events that are relevant to what happens in your network, and that would be sent to a monitoring station. So that's a very nice place to go and have a look at. It's always what I do when I'm looking at a global problem on your controller. But again, remember, 256 entries, and if you can reproduce the problem, you can always clear the logs, ask the people to redo what they were doing, and so do you have too many entries to look through. There is another great place, which is the system logs. So if you go to logs and config, you can, of course, configure here a syslog server to send your logs to. You can also configure what kind of messaging level you want to keep for your system. And you may want to learn about syslog levels if you're not aware of those. There are eight different levels, and you can decide what level you're going to log from here. But once you have this configured, then you can go to the message logs where all these logs will be available. So it's not the same as in the SNMP trap, as you can tell. There are some information that may be useful, some others that may not be telling you much about what's going on. For example, this one, export foreign pen step run SSID guest connected for three seconds. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? But if you're troubleshooting a problem, most of the time when you come here, that kind of message will tell you something. For example, here, what I just did, I'm going to show you that in a few minutes, I connected a guest to a network that could not be tunneled. And it says, I was connected for three seconds. Three seconds is not a very long time, right? That's a clear sign that something is not working right. So in the context of my troubleshooting that guest user saying, I can't connect, it tries to open and then suddenly drops, this tells me that it's not working. It's three seconds only. So. Some messages may not be very clear, but if you troubleshooting, they may help you understand or get more context about what's going on. But the two together, SNMP trap logs and message logs, are usually nice places to start when you look on the controller for global problems or hints about what may be going on. The message logs page, just like the trap log page, has 256 entries max, and the older entry is being deleted as you get more than 256. So if you can reproduce the problem, you can clear the logs as well, ask the user to redo whatever they were doing so that you have only a few entries to work from.